Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again. We are going to continue our studies. We are reviewing for the grade seven New York State mathematics exam. So this is our show number one. We're taking samples from the 2019 exam. If you need help with your homework, there's Dollar Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursdays, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They're very nice people. They will help you. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Optimum Cable Vision on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m., Channel 15, only in Peak Skill. You can watch our YouTube study videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson, PKMS, Peak Skill Middle School. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know how we're doing. Write me a comment. Let me know how I can improve and do better for you. And I do write you back. You can check out our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 21. Very good movie about the pandemic. So check it out. Tweet me at DRobMath1. All right, let's get started. Here's our first question. Question number one from the 2019 state test. Clara goes miniature golfing. She pays $7.50 for an admission ticket and $6.25 for each round of golf that she golfs. The total amount Clara pays for admission and the number of rounds she golfs is $26.25. Which equation can be used to determine the number of rounds, called X, that Clara golfs? All right, so let's underline what's important. And here she pays $7.29 for an admission ticket. So that means she's going to Definitely have to pay that. So I'm going to put plus $7.50. So I'm looking at my answers, and I'm going to see where does it have plus $7.50. I see choice A has it. Um, hmm, looks like choice A would be the one to go with. But let me read a little further. And she's going to pay $6.25 for each round she golfs. So she's going to golf. $6.25 for the number of rounds, which they call the number of rounds they call X. So that's being multiplied by uh, 625. And if you remember in our proportional relationship video, and we talked about the constant proportionality, one round would cost $6.25. So X rounds would cost $6.25 times that. So the second thing, I'm going to look for is $6.25 times X. And another way of writing that would be 625X. So that's the second thing I'm looking for. So it looks like my choices again is going to be A or B, but I'm leaning more towards A because it has the plus 750, which I need. All right, let's keep going. What else do they have here? So the total amount that she pays for admission and the number of rounds of golf is 625. So the third thing I'm looking for, it has to equal $26.25. So if I look at my choices, they all equal $25.25. So that really does mean no good. But let's look at the last thing they're talking about. Which equation? Equation is a problem that has an equal sign. So I need an equal sign. So it's got an equal. Can be used to determine the number of rounds of golf, Clara, uh, number of rounds of golf, number of rounds X that Clara golfs. So I have to have an equal sign in this equation because sometimes they want to make sure you know the difference between an equation and an expression or an equality. So I have to have an equal sign. They all have equal signs. They have to also have plus 750. This is the only one that has plus 750. And the second thing, it has to have the constant of proportionality, uh, which is 625 times the number of, of rounds, which is the 625x. And it has to be equal 2650. So I'm going to pick choice A. So my answer, I would say, would be choice A for this one. And that's correct. They agree with me. So let's go on and see what else we got. 
This is question number nine from the 2019 test, grade seven. The diagram shows the length and width of a cell phone. So the length is larger, is a larger version of the same brand of cell phones. So you got two cell phones here and you got lengths and widths. So the length of the larger cell phone is the same version of that one. So here's a larger cell phone over here, which is 6.21. And this uh, other cell phone is 5.4 inches. So, so I know these are my lengths, and I can call that lengths, L for length. And I, that W must be on top. That would be our width. But let's see what else they're saying. The lengths and width of the two cell phones are proportional. That's an important topic. What is the width in inches? of the larger version of the cell phone. Well, they gave us the width up here, which was 2.26, so we wanna know what this width is. Well, the key is making a proportion. Proportions are equal fractions. So I'm gonna make two fractions, set them up, and compare the length to the width. So there's my proportion. So the length of, of the first phone, this will be phone number one, is 5.4. Then the length of phone number two is 6.21. Now let's compare the width of the phones again. So the width of the first phone that has a length of 5.4 is, is, Let's get a good color. Uh, 2.6. So 2.6 for, for their width. So that's his width. Now, his the larger phone, we don't know. So I'm going to put a W for that width because I don't know what the width is of the larger phone. So that's what they're asking me to find. So we have proportions. If you remember my video on how to solve proportional relationships, we cross multiply to find the missing number. So we're gonna cross multiply. So 5.4 W is equal to 2.6 times 621. Now I need a calculator, so pause for a second and hang tight. I will get a calculator. So or I can just divide both sides by 5.4, which would be a nice little addition there So to this question. So divide by 5.4, and that'll give me what W is equal to. So 2.6 times 6.21 divided by 5.4 will equal to, I believe, 2.99. C, 2.99. And you can check me next time I get my calculator out. So I get 2.99, choice C. So that's how you would deal with a proportional relationship. So if you haven't seen my proportional relationship video, check it out. All right, so hopefully you're understanding what's going on in this uh, video. If not, write down your questions, bring them in tomorrow, and I'll be glad to answer them in class. Here's another question. Number 29 from the state test 2019, Manny goes bowling. He spends $25. I mean, he has to spend $25. Okay, so he has to spend $25. Okay, that's good to know. He's got plenty of money. He spends $4.25 to rent shoes. So he's spending $4.25 to rent shoes. So I can make a list, but let's see what else they're saying. And I'll underline what's going on. So he has spends on these shoes, 425. He spends $2.50 on each game he bowls. This sounds a little like the other question, each game. So $2.50 times the number of games. You can call it X or G for games. So that'll be $2.50 X, so that's good to know. Which 
inequality. Now they're talking about an inequality. That's a problem that uses uh, one of those other comparison symbols besides equal, like less than, greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to, one of those uh, comparison symbols. So that's an inequality. It has more than one answer, by the way. So which inequality can Manny use to determine X, the greatest number of games he can bowl? All right, now that's very interesting. We want to know the greatest number of games he can bowl. Well, how much money does he have? It says he has $25, so let me write that down. He has $25. Now, I'm going to put over here an X, because I'm going to first try to determine which of these signs am I going to use. So I have less than, greater, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to are my two choices. Now, let's try to make sense of it. If he has $25, can he spend $25 on bowling and shoes? Sure. So he can spend equal to $25. Now, here's my next question. Can he spend more than $25 if all he has is $25? Suppose he likes to uh, bowl a whole lot of games and he has $25. Can he spend more than $25, more than he has? No. If you said no, you're right. He can spend less than $25. So he can spend, of the two things, he can spend equal to $25 or less than $25. So I'm looking at my answer going to be X less than or equal to $25. So I'm going to eliminate a couple of my choices very quickly. A and B, because that's more than $25. So my answer is going to be either C or D. Now, let's see oh, which one should I choose. All right. Um, I'm looking at choice C, 2.50. What was that? Because they left out the zero. If you want to put the zero in, you may. So $2.50. What was $2.50? That's for each game he bowls. Well, uh, that just says plus $2.50. If you look back on the top here, $2.50 X games, that should be what the price of the ga each game times X games, like we said in the other question. So that question is going to be eliminated also. So I'm going to choose answer choice D because he buys the shoes, which is $4.25, so it rents the shoes, and he has to spend two point five, which is missing a zero there. I'll put the zero there. So don't let them confuse you. $2.50 X less than or equal to because you cannot spend more than $25. So I'm going with choice letter D. So if you say choice D, let's see. Choice D is the correct answer. So hopefully this made sense in trying to figure it out from getting the comparison symbol in the first place. Good question. Oh, all right. This is question number 42. A company starts back, starts to track the number of phone calls received each month. Information about the number of phone calls the company received the first three months of tracking are listed below, is listed below. During the first month, the company received 4,264 phone calls. So this is the first month. 4,264 phone calls. Now, during the second month, okay, the second month, the company received 25% more, and that's interesting, more phone calls than in the first month. So they got additional calls than the first month. So I'm curious how many more. Well, I would take my calculator and multiply 4,000 times 25% to see what percent of those calls uh, they received that were more. So let me multiply that out. And that gave me 1,066 more additional calls that they got. So that's how many additional calls. Well, wait a minute. How many calls did they get in the second month? Well, they got the 1,066 additional and they had uh, more than the 4,264. So if we add those two up, that'll give us a total of 5,000 
330 calls. So in the second month, they got 5,330 calls. So that's the number of calls they got in the second month. Would have been nice if they would have said that, but they expect us to work it out. During the third month, the company received 6,396 phone calls. All right, so this is the third month. All right, here's our question, finally. Oh, the extended response. What is the percent increase in the number of phone calls from the second month to the third month? So there was a change in the number of calls. It went from the second month of 5,330 to 6,396. So it changed. So I need to find how much did it change by. So I could take the difference between the two calls, 396, and subtract the 5,030. That's the difference between the calls. And when we're finding the diff the distance between those, we can use absolute value to make sure our answer is always positive. But we're not finished though. We have to divide that by the original amount of calls that it changed from. And it says from right here, from the second month. What was the second month? 5,030 calls. So we're setting up a fraction. If you check out my percent change video, it'll show this a little deeper detail. And I'm going to multiply that by 100 to change a percent to a fraction. So here's what it looks like. And I put it backwards the second month minus the third month. So you can put it backwards and you're still going to get a positive number because the absolute value is always going to be positive. Divide that by the, the original month that they're talking about from the second month. And we multiply that by 100 to change it to a percent. And that'll give us a nice little 20%. So the percent increase in the number of phone calls from the second month to the third month is 20%. And if you took a little time and multiply 20% times uh, 5,050 and added that amount, that answer to, to uh, uh, the 5,330, you will get 6,000. 396 phone calls, just a little sidebar to figure out uh, how they got that, but that's not necessary. So our answer is going to be a 20% change in the number of phone calls from the second month to the third month. So it went up. Yes, it went up by 20%. Okay. All right. So I hope you understood that one. That was a good question. So I hope you understand what's going on. If you're not sure, rewatch the video and bring in your questions because it's a lot of stuff we got to do for the state test. So if you need help with your homework, there's dial a teacher homework helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They will help you out. You can watch my tutorial videos on YouTube. My channel name is Dan Robinson, PKMS. Subscribe to our channel. Help us get to a thousand subscribers and give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing and write us a comment because I do write you back. So let us know we, what we can do better. Check out our newest release, PKMS Math Prep 21. 21 years of doing this. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. Don't forget to watch our television show on Optimum Cable Vision. Only in Peak Skill on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Channel 15. Only in Peak Skill. If you desire to study with me or want a worksheet of this topic, you can write me at drobinson at peakskillschools.org. Hey, there's Math Prep 21, a little clip of that. So check it out. I think you'll like it. Good movie. The Pandemic. Good luck on your exam. I know you're going to do well. well. Keep watching my tutorial videos. Check out the other year that we've uh, reviewed these tutorial uh, topics. So check it out. It'll help you out. And I hope you enjoyed our show, Getting Ready for Math New York State uh, Mathematics Exam, show number one for 2021. Good luck on your test. Take care.